Section 19 of White Knights and Other Stories by Fyodor Dostoevsky. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Karina Schultz. A Faint Heart by Fyodor Dostoevsky. Translated from the Russian by Constance Garnett. Part 3. Vasya, Vasya! Arkady cried in alarm. When did you fall asleep? Vasya opened his eyes and jumped up from his chair. Oh! he cried. I must have fallen asleep. He flew to the papers. Everything was right. All were in order. There was not a blot of ink nor a spot of grease from the candle on them. I think I must have fallen asleep about six o'clock, said Vasya. How cold it is in the night! Let us have tea and I will go on again. Do you feel better? Yes, yes, I'm all right. I'm all right now. A happy new year to you, brother Vasya. And to you too, brother. The same to you, dear boy. They embraced each other. Vasya's chin was quivering and his eyes were moist. Arkady Ivanovitch was silent. He felt sad. They drank their tea hastily. Arkady, I've made up my mind. I am going myself to Yulian Mostakovitch. Why, he wouldn't notice. But my conscience feels ill at ease, brother. But you know it's for his sake you are sitting here. It's for his sake you are wearing yourself out. Enough. Do you know what, brother? I'll go round and see. Whom? asked Vasya. The Artemyevs. I'll take them your good wishes for the new year as well as mine. My dear fellow. Well, I'll stay here. And I see it's a good idea of yours. I shall be working here. I shan't waste my time. Wait one minute. I'll write a note. Yes, do, brother, do. There's plenty of time. I've still to wash and shave and to brush my best coat. Well, Vasya, we are going to be contented and happy. Embrace me, Vasya. Ah, uh, if only we may, brother. Does Mr. Shumkov live here? They heard a child's voice on the stairs. Yes, my dear, yes, said Mavra, showing the visitor in. What's that? What is it? cried Vasya, leaping up from the table and rushing to the entry. Petinka, you? Good morning. I have the honor to wish you a happy new year, Vasily Petrovitch, said a pretty boy of ten years old with curly black hair. Sister sends you her love, and so does Mama, and Sister told me to give you a kiss for her. Vasya caught the messenger up in the air and printed a long, enthusiastic kiss on his lips, which were very much like Lizanka's. "'Kiss him, Arkady,' he said, handing Petya to him. And without touching the ground, the boy was transferred to Arkady Ivanovitch's powerful and eager arms. "'Will you have some breakfast, dear?' "'Thank you very much. We have had it already. We got up early today. The others have gone to church. Sister was two hours curling my hair and pomading it, washing me and mending my trousers, for I tore them yesterday, playing with Shashka in the street. We were snowballing.' well 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 so she dressed me up to come and see you and then pomaded my head and then gave me a regular kissing she said go to vasya wish him a happy new year and ask whether they are happy whether they had a good night and to ask something else oh yes whether you had finished the work you spoke of yesterday when you were there oh i've got it all written down said the boy reading from a slip of paper which he took out of his pocket yes they were uneasy it will be finished it will be tell her that it will be i shall finish it on my word of honor and something else oh yes i forgot sister sent a little note and a present and i was forgetting it my goodness oh you little darling where is it where is it that's it oh look brother see what she writes the darling the precious you know, I saw there yesterday a paper case for me. It's not finished, so she says. I am sending you a lock of my hair, and the other will come later. Look, brother, look! And overwhelmed with rapture, he showed Arkady Ivanovitch a curl of luxuriant jet-black hair. Then he kissed it fervently and put it in his breast pocket, nearest his heart. Vasya, I shall get you a locket for that curl. Arkady Ivanovitch said resolutely at last. And we are going to have hot veal, and tomorrow brains. 
Mama wants to make cakes, but we are not going to have millet porridge, said the boy after a moment's thought, to wind up his budget of interesting items. Oh, what a pretty boy, cried Arkady Ivanovitch. Vasya, you are the happiest of mortals. The boy finished his tea, took from Vasya a note, a thousand kisses, and went out happy and frolicsome as before. Well, brother, began Arkady Ivanovitch, highly delighted, you see how splendid it all is. You see, everything is going well. Don't be downcast. Don't be uneasy. Go ahead, get it done, Vasya, get it done. I'll be home at two o'clock. I'll go round to them and then to Yulian Mostakovitch. Well, good-bye, brother, good-bye. Oh, if only... Very good, you go, very good, said Vasya. Then I really won't go to Yulian Mostakovitch. Good-bye. Stay, brother, stay, tell them... Well, whatever you think fit. Kiss her, and give me a full account of everything afterwards. Come, come, of course, I know all about it. This happiness has upset you, the suddenness of it all. You've not been yourself since yesterday. You have not got over the excitement of yesterday. Well, it's settled. Now, try and get over it, Vasya. Goodbye. Goodbye. At last the friends parted. All the morning Arkady Ivanovitch was preoccupied and could think of nothing but Vasya. He knew his weak, highly nervous character. Yes, this happiness has upset him. I was right there, he said to himself. Upon my word, he has made me quite depressed, too. That man will make a tragedy of anything. What a feverish creature. Oh, I must save him. I must save him said Arkady, not noticing that he himself was exaggerating into something serious, a slight trouble, in reality quite trivial. Only at eleven o'clock he reached the porter's lodge of Yulian Mostakovitch's house, to add his modest name to the long list of illustrious persons who had written their names on a sheet of blotted and scribbled paper in the porter's lodge. What was his surprise when he saw just above his own the signature of Vasya Shumkov? It amazed him. "'What's the matter with him?' he thought. Arkady Ivanovitch, who had just been so buoyant with hope, came out feeling upset. There was certainly going to be trouble. But how? And in what form? He reached the Artemyevs with gloomy forebodings. He seemed absent-minded from the first, and, after talking a little with Lizanka, went away with tears in his eyes. He was really anxious about Vasya. He went home running, and on the Neva came full tilt upon Vasya himself. The latter, too, was uneasy. "'Where are you going?' cried Arkady Ivanovitch. Vasya stopped as though he had been caught in a crime. "'Oh, it's nothing, brother. I wanted to go for a walk. "'You could not stand it, and have been to the Artemyevs? "'Oh, Vasya, Vasya, why did you go to Yulian Mostakovitch? Vasya did not answer. But then, with a wave of his hand, he said, "'Arkady, I don't know what is the matter with me. I—' "'Come, come, Vasya. I know what it is. Calm yourself. You've been excited and overwrought ever since yesterday. Only think, it's not much to bear. Everybody's fond of you. Everybody's ready to do anything for you. Your work is getting on all right. You will get it done. You will certainly get it done.' I know that you have been imagining something. You have had apprehensions about something. No, it's all right, it's all right. Do you remember, Vasya? Do you remember it was the same with you once before? Do you remember when you got your promotion? In your joy and thankfulness you were so zealous that you spoiled all your work for a week. It is just the same with you now. Yes, yes, Arkady, but now it is different. It is not that at all. How is it different? And very likely the work is not urgent at all. While you are killing yourself, it's nothing, it's nothing. I am all right, it's nothing. Well, come along. Why, are you going home, and not to them? Yes, brother. How could I have the face to turn up there? I have changed my mind. It was only that I could not stay on alone without you. Now you are coming back with me. I'll sit down to write again. Let us go. They walked along, and for some time were silent. Vasya was in haste. 
"'Why don't you ask me about them?' said Arkady Ivanovitch. "'Oh, yes. Well, Arkasha, what about them?' "'Vasya, you are not like yourself.' "'Oh, I am all right. I am all right. Tell me everything, Arkasha.' said Vasya, in an imploring voice, as though to avoid further explanations. Arkady Ivanovitch sighed. He felt utterly at a loss, looking at Vasya. His account of their friends roused Vasya. He even grew talkative. They had dinner together. Lizanka's mother had filled Arkady Ivanovitch's pockets with little cakes, and eating them, the friends grew more cheerful. After dinner, Vasya promised to take a nap, so as to sit up all night. He did, in fact, lie down. In the morning, someone whom it was impossible to refuse had invited Arkady Ivanovitch to tea. The friends parted. Arkady promised to come back as soon as he could, by eight o'clock if possible. The three hours of separation seemed to him like three years. At last he got away and rushed back to Vasya. When he went into the room, he found it in darkness. Vasya was not at home. He asked Mavra, Mavra said that he had been writing all the time and had not slept at all. Then he had paced up and down the room, and after that, an hour before, he had run out, saying he would be back in half an hour. And when, says he, Arkady Ivanovitch comes in, tell him, old woman, says he, Mavra told him in conclusion, that I have gone out for a walk, and he repeated the order three or four times. He is at the Artemyevs, thought Arkady Ivanovitch and he shook his head. A minute later he jumped up with renewed hope. He has simply finished, he thought. That's all it is. He couldn't wait, but ran off there. But no, he would have waited for me. Let's have a peep what he has there. He lighted a candle and ran to Vasya's writing table. The work had made progress, and it looked as though there were not much left to do. Arkady Ivanovitch was about to investigate further when Vasya himself walked in. "'Oh, you are here?' he cried with a start of dismay. Arkady Ivanovitch was silent. He was afraid to question Vasya. The latter dropped his eyes and remained silent too, as he began sorting the papers. At last their eyes met. The look in Vasya's was so beseeching, imploring, and broken that Arkady shuddered when he saw it. His heart quivered and was full. "'Vasya, my dear boy, what is it? What's wrong?' he cried, rushing to him and squeezing him in his arms. "'Explain to me. I don't understand you. And your depression. What is the matter with you, my poor, tormented boy? What is it? Tell me all about it, without hiding anything. It can't be only this.' Vasya held him tight and could say nothing. He could scarcely breathe. "'Don't, Vasya, don't!' "'Well, if you don't finish it, what then? "'I don't understand you. "'Tell me your trouble. "'You see, it is for your sake I—' "'Oh, dear, oh, dear,' he said, "'walking up and down the room "'and clutching at everything he came across "'as though seeking at once some remedy for Vasya. "'I will go to Yulian Mostakovich instead of you tomorrow. "'I will ask him, entreat him to let you have another day.' I will explain it all to him, anything, if it worries you so. God forbid, cried Vasya, and turned as white as the wall. He could scarcely stand on his feet. Vasya, Vasya! Vasya pulled himself together. His lips were quivering. He tried to say something, but could only convulsively squeeze Arkady's hand in silence. His hand was cold. Arkady stood facing him, full of anxious and miserable suspense. Vasya raised his eyes again. Vasya, God bless you, Vasya. You wring my heart, my dear boy, my friend. Tears gushed from Vasya's eyes. He flung himself on Arkady's bosom. I have deceived you, Arkady, he said. I have deceived you. Forgive me. Forgive me. I have been faithless to your friendship. What is it, Vasya? What is the matter? asked Arkady in real alarm. Look! And with a gesture of despair, Vasya tossed out of the drawer onto the table six thick manuscripts, similar to the one he had copied. What's this? What I have to get through by the day after tomorrow. I haven't done a quarter. 
Don't ask me, don't ask me how it has happened, Vasya went on, speaking at once of what was distressing him so terribly. Arkady, dear friend, I don't know myself what came over me. I feel as though I were coming out of a dream. I have wasted three weeks doing nothing. I kept, I kept going to see her. My heart was aching. I was tormented by the uncertainty. I could not write. I did not even think about it. Only now, when happiness is at hand for me, I have come to my senses. Vasya, began Arkady Ivanovitch resolutely. Vasya, I will save you. I understand it all. It's a serious matter. I will save you. Listen. Listen to me. I will go to Yulian Mostakovitch tomorrow. Don't shake your head. No, listen. I will tell him exactly how it has all been. Let me do that. I will explain to him. I will go into everything. I will tell him how crushed you are, how you are worrying yourself. Do you know that you are killing me now? Vasya brought out, turning cold with horror. Arkady Ivanovitch turned pale, but at once, controlling himself, laughed. Is that all? Is that all? he said. Upon my word, Vasya, upon my word. Aren't you ashamed? Come, listen. I see that I am grieving you. You see, I understand you. I know what is passing in your heart. Why, we have been living together for five years, thank God. You are such a kind, soft-hearted fellow, but weak, unpardonably weak. Why, even Lisaveta Mikhailovna has noticed it. And you are a dreamer, and that's a bad thing, too. You may go from bad to worse, brother. I tell you, I know what you want. You would like Yulian Mostakovitch, for instance, to be beside himself and maybe to give a ball, too, from joy, because you are going to get married. Stop, stop, you are frowning. You see that at one word from me you are offended on Yulian Mostakovitch's account. I'll let him alone. You know I respect him just as much as you do. But, argue as you may, you can't prevent my thinking that you would like there to be no one unhappy in the whole world when you are getting married. Yes, brother, you must admit that you would like me, for instance, your best friend, to come in for a fortune of a hundred thousand all of a sudden. You would like all the enemies in the world to be suddenly, for no rhyme or reason, reconciled, so that in their joy they might all embrace one another in the middle of the street, and then, perhaps, come here to call on you. Vasya, my dear boy, I am not laughing. It is true, you've said as much to me long ago, in different ways. Because you are happy, you want everyone, absolutely everyone, to become happy at once. It hurts you and troubles you to be happy alone. And so you want at once to do your utmost to be worthy of that happiness, and maybe to do some great deed to satisfy your conscience. Oh, I understand how ready you are to distress yourself for having suddenly been remiss just where you ought to have shown your zeal, your capacity. Well, maybe your gratitude, as you say. It is very bitter for you to think that Yulian Mostakovitch may frown and even be angry when he sees that you have not justified the expectations he had of you. It hurts you to think that you may hear reproaches from the man you look upon as your benefactor, and at such a moment, when your heart is full of joy and you don't know on whom to lavish your gratitude. Isn't that true? It is, isn't it? Arkady Ivanovitch, whose voice was trembling, paused and drew a deep breath. Vasya looked affectionately at his friend. A smile passed over his lips. His face even lighted up, as though with a gleam of hope. "'Well, listen, then,' Arkady Ivanovitch began again, growing more hopeful. "'There's no necessity that you should forfeit Yulian Mostakovitch's favor. "'Is there, dear boy? Is there any question of it?' "'And since it is so,' said Arkady, jumping up, "'I shall sacrifice myself for you.' I am going tomorrow to Yulian Mostakovitch, and don't oppose me. You magnify your failure to a crime, Vasya. Yulian Mostakovitch is magnanimous and merciful, and, what is more, he is not like you. He will listen to you and me, and get us out of our trouble, brother Vasya. 
Well, are you calmer? Vasya pressed his friend's hands with tears in his eyes. Hush, hush, Arkady, he said. The thing is settled. I haven't finished so very well. If I haven't finished, I haven't finished, and there's no need for you to go. I will tell him all about it. I will go myself. I am calmer now. I am perfectly calm, only you mustn't go. But listen. Vasya, my dear boy, Arkady Ivanovitch cried joyfully. I judged from what you said. I am glad that you have thought better of things and have recovered yourself. But whatever may befall you, whatever happens, I am with you. Remember that. I see that it worries you to think of my speaking to Yulian Mostakovitch, and I won't say a word, not a word. You shall tell him yourself. You see, you shall go tomorrow. Oh, no, you had better not go. You'll go on writing here, you see. And I'll find out about this work, whether it is very urgent or not, whether it must be done by the time or not. And if you don't finish it in time, what will come of it? Then I will run back to you. Do you see? Do you see there is still hope? Suppose the work is not urgent, it may be all right. Yulian Mostakovitch may not remember, then all is saved. Vasya shook his head doubtfully, but his grateful eyes never left his friend's face. Come, that's enough. I am so weak, so tired, he said, sighing. I don't want to think about it. Let us talk of something else. I won't write either now. Do you know, I'll only finish two short pages just to get to the end of a passage. Listen, I have long wanted to ask you, how is it you know me so well? Tears dropped from Vasya's eyes on Arkady's hand. If you knew, Vasya, how fond I am of you, you would not ask that, yes. Yes, yes, Arkady, I don't know that, because I don't know why you are so fond of me. Yes, Arkady, do you know? Even your love has been killing me. Do you know ever so many times, particularly when I am thinking of you in bed, for I always think of you when I am falling asleep, I shed tears, and my heart throbs at the thought, at the thought, well, at the thought that you are so fond of me, while I can do nothing to relieve my heart, can do nothing to repay you. You see, Vasya, you see what a fellow you are. Why, how upset you are now, said Arkady, whose heart ached at that moment and who remembered the scene in the street the day before. Nonsense. You want me to be calm, but I never have been so calm and happy. Do you know? Listen, I want to tell you all about it, but I am afraid of wounding you. You keep scolding me and being vexed, and I am afraid. See how I am trembling now. I don't know why. You see, this is what I want to say. I feel as though I had never known myself before. Yes, yes, I only began to understand other people too, yesterday. I did not feel or appreciate things fully, brother. My heart was hard. Listen, how has it happened that I have never done good to anyone, anyone in the world? Because I couldn't. I am not even pleasant to look at. But everybody does me good. You, to begin with. Do you suppose I don't see that? Only I said nothing. Only I said nothing. Hush, Vasya. Oh, Arkasha, it's all right, Vasya interrupted, hardly able to articulate for tears. I talked to you yesterday about Yulian Mostakovitch, and you know yourself how stern and severe he is. Even you have come in for a reprimand from him. Yet he deigned to jest with me yesterday, to show his affection and kind-heartedness, which he prudently conceals from everyone. Come, Vasya, that only shows you deserve your good fortune. Oh, Arkasha, how I long to finish all this. No, I shall ruin my good luck. I feel that. Oh, no, not through that, Vasya added, seeing that Arkady glanced at the heap of urgent work lying on the table. That's nothing. That's only paper covered with writing. It's nonsense. That matter's settled. I went to see them today, Arkasha. I did not go in. I felt depressed and sad. I simply stood at the door. She was playing the piano. I listened. 
"'You see, Arkady,' he went on, dropping his voice, "'I did not dare to go in. "'I say, Vasya, what is the matter with you? "'You look at one so strangely. "'Oh, it's nothing. "'I feel a little sick. "'My legs are trembling. "'It's because I sat up last night. "'Yes, everything looks green before my eyes. "'It's here, here.' "'He pointed to his heart. "'He fainted.' When he came to himself, Arkady tried to take forcible measures. He tried to compel him to go to bed. Nothing would induce Vasya to consent. He shed tears, wrung his hands, wanted to write, was absolutely set on finishing his two pages. To avoid exciting him, Arkady let him sit down to the work. "'Do you know,' said Vasya, as he settled himself in his place, "'an idea has occurred to me. There is hope.' He smiled to Arkady, and his pale face lighted up with a gleam of hope. "'I will take him what is done the day after tomorrow. About the rest I will tell a lie. I will say it has been burnt, that it has been sopped in water, that I have lost it, that, in fact, I have not finished it. I cannot lie. I will explain. Do you know what? I'll explain to him all about it. I will tell him how it was that I could not... I'll tell him about my love. He has got married himself just lately. He'll understand me. I will do it all, of course, respectfully, quietly. He will see my tears and be touched by them. Yes, of course, you must go. You must go and explain to him. But there's no need of tears. Tears for what? Really, Vasya, you quite scare me. Yes, I'll go. I'll go. But now, let me write. Let me write, Arkasha. I am not interfering with anyone. Let me write. End of part three.